dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, the movie Doomsday. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. everybody, today is Friday the 13th, and we're taking a look at Doomsday, the movie. That's right, this movie came out in 2008, it was written and directed by Neil Marshall, and it was done by Rogue Pictures. Um, basically, the plot is, in Scotland, the virus breaks out, called the Reaper virus, and it's so, uh, it plagues so heavily that they actually close off the entirety of Scotland with these giant walls. And like... Weld them shut. Yeah, weld them shut. No one can come in or go out. In fact, if you go, if you fly over it, you get shot down, apparently, because no one's allowed. It's a no-fly zone. Um, so it's, it's you know, it, it has that going for it. But then uh, you in London, you have the Reaper virus kind of breaks in, and it kind of starts plaguing London. So in order to figure out what to do, they actually send people into uh, uh, Scotland because apparently there were survivors out there, so they're wondering if there's a cure. So this elite force has to go in, find the cure and bring it back to save London and hopefully the entire world. Um, and that's pretty much the premise. Why don't you take it away? All right. This is one of my guilty pleasures. I have a lot of guilty pleasures, honestly. Um, this this fits right in with, like, Death Race. I like the Death Race movies. At least one and two. At least one. <laughs> and then uh, Smoke and Aces, which I'm going to make him do at some point. I'm not sure he likes it, but I like it. So these are a lot of movies that I think have a lot of potential, whether it was realized or not. It still, you know, got me excited and got my brain going kind of thing. This is one of those. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of uh, 28 Days Later meets Escape from New York, you know, kind of thing. Um, with a little Mad Max thrown in for good measure. It's, yeah. it's kind of that feeling. And there is a lot of cliché-ness about it. But I really do enjoy, and again, I think it's mostly unrealized potential. But I enjoy what is there. Um, Rona Mitra is, she plays... Uh, Major Sinclair, which I think she's awesome. Awesome. I think she's an underrated actress. I think she's kind of treated as a thrown away actress, which is kind of sad. I always, I always enjoy her characters. It's just that she's not in great movies. Yeah. So I enjoy her portrayal, and she's kick ass. She's like a you know a, a her heroine. I mean, she's she's kick ass. Um, let's see. Bob Hoskins is in there. Uh, he doesn't have a huge part, but he's okay. I don't know. There's nothing that really. He kind of feels like he's in a wrong movie. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> His his character is as important. It's very straight. Yeah, is is as colorful as his name. His name is Bill Nelson in the <laughs> movie, and that's about as much as you're gonna find out because he's yeah he's kind of in there and that's it. And the other actor I'm gonna mention is Craig Conway, which I, he plays Saul. It's kind of like the rebel leader, and you find out more about it, which I'm not gonna spoil. But he kind of steals the show. He's yeah. so charismatic and just odd, and you know you're freaked out by him, but you're also he's he's kind of cool. I mean, it's just kind of fun to be around this, even though it's yeah. It's, it involves cannibalism and weird sex slaves and all that stuff. Anyway, um, this this movie is, you know, I have the unrated version. Even the unrated version is not like a hard R to me. I mean, there's a few moments where it's like, eh, but there's not really. I mean, it's 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 almost family friendly in a way, in some ways. I mean, the cannibalism aside. Yeah, and there was, well, hmm. Because I, I, you definitely see breasts at least once, so... Do you? Yeah, in the I don't top. remember that. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Yeah, right. It, it, once. I yeah, think that's well. all of it. Anyway, um, she is such a kick-ass character, and I definitely have more to say about Rona Mitra's character. Um, but what I like about this is the production values are high enough to be cool, but they try to take it too seriously. So I think that it actually goes into that cheesy town. Yes. Especially when there's the music going, you know, it's like two on the nose and all that stuff so it definitely goes into that usa movie kind of territory every once in a while but again like i say it, it's more about the unrealized potential that is there and it gets me excited and i i really okay this i'm gonna get to my first comparison this is like friggin borderlands the movie it's just it, it's one of those things that makes me feel like if they had put more into it more attention it would be just as cool as borderlands it gives me that same kind of feel because you've got like the crazy punk guys that have assembled weapons, you know, very uh, Fallout as well, yeah. and just kind of all assembled weapons from whatever gears they could find or whatever ragtag, you know, Mad Max vehicles. And then on the other side, you have like 
the, the guys that are using that same material, but they're knights because in Scotland there's a lot of castles, and even though it was like a museum when the whole plague hit or whatever, they took over the castle and now they're kind of you know feeling this medieval flavor or whatever. So it's very radically different. There is a lot of quirk and possibly you could say humor about the characters that to me feels like Borderlands. Just the whole idea of roaming around and encountering bands of baddies is very, you know, Borderlands. So I'm not saying it's as good as Borderlands, but it gives me the same flavor and it makes me feel like, damn, that would be an awesome movie if they did a Borderlands movie or if they took this and revamped it and, you know, made it into that. Um, I, I, you don't agree with that? Uh, huh. one, one of the first things that RG told me before I watched this movie was to, to take it for what it was. So I tried to do that um, and I watched it and I enjoyed it from a blank page, you know, just like, okay, I watched it, yeah, it was fun. Um, but then when you start to think about it, it kind of doesn't really make any sense. First of all, you have this kind of uh, jarring jointing of, you know, this kind of dystopian future with the uh, the punks and the Mad Max kind of references. Then you have this group of people who are knightly, you know, they have the armor. And but that's what I'm saying is that... It's, it's so odd. And then, it's a of video course, game. That's what that's what Borderlands does, you know. Yeah, I guess. And then right outside of all of that, you have uh, the modern, almost futuristic uh, society, um, well, because it is. it is it is a little future. bit in the future. It's a couple twenty three years, couple something. decades, yeah, uh, later. Um, so you do have this kind of future tech type thing happening. So I don't know. There's just so much going on that it's a little jarring, but it did kind of flow into each other fairly okay. I really was not expecting to see it night. I mean, just as soon as he popped, like... He, he, My wife had the same response. But his armor is all, you know, you can tell it's been melted and pounded together from definitely. scraps from cars and shit. Definitely, definitely. Um, it was just, it just as soon as he showed up, it was like, uh, what? You know, like, huh? Just, well, they huh? chose a castle because it had already, right. you know, walls that could be used for defense. And so they just kind of went with it. And right. Yes, and, it is a little. And I, I can't really blame them because if I ever had the opportunity to dress up like a knight, I probably <laughs> would, so... But they're not allowed to have the same kind of technology and stuff. Right, so you can right. kind of understand understand but yes i understand you know and that's why it's a guilty pleasure and that's why i say it's a lot of potential but yeah. it's unrealized yeah. potential um I, the, the other thing i have a problem with is there are several inconsistencies and the only one that i'm really going to bring up because it doesn't ruin anything is the fact that inside this quarantine zone they pull like a uh, a captain kirk on a dangerous planet where they're not wearing masks so uh, this is an airborne virus so the second you start breathing it in you're going to die or you know stuff something happens but he, you know, they're out there and they're just like. At first, you know, they they start with the helmets and the and they have this decontamination thing happen every time they enter the truck. Um, but when they're outside, they're like, you know, running around half naked. That, that's you know. true, but they kind of learned that. Well, I see. I don't want to spoil it, but they learned that that's not necessarily a risk anymore. It's been a long time, whatever. Yeah. I mean, you can't really spoil it. But yes, there could possibly be lots of inconsistencies. Like I say, it's not like you know this wonderfully architected you know story and all that stuff. It's just about how like oh dude that's that's so cool. If that was in a better movie, that would be just awesome. You know, I, like I agree with that. Main ideas. I don't like like the. Uh, the Mercedes Benz or whatever that they find that's yeah. kind of ridiculous. Yeah. Although well, they do at least take the time to be like, we need to find fuel for it. Yes. It's just like the batteries would be dead. Yeah, you know, they totally thing. would. So anyway. years of no working, yeah. There's definitely a lot of, again, USA kind of movie, USA kind of movie feel about it. But the other thing I'm going to say is, I, did, what did you think about Mina, Rona Meter's character, Sinclair? I like I liked her. I did. Major Sinclair. Does that make you think of anything? Major Sinclair? No. The Major with that haircut. If they made a Ghost in the Shell movie, she okay. would be so freaking perfect. Yeah, yeah, no, she's you're absolutely hot, right. And she's she's like wire like wiry muscly whatever and she has the perfect haircut and I just every time I see her I'm like please make a cowboy or um uh, uh, Ghost, Ghost in the Shell movie. Please make a Ghost in the Shell movie like a real live action movie. She would be perfect. It would be awesome. And she's she's about to get too old, so please make it. You know kind of thing. But I it'll never happen. She's but. about to get too old, he said. She it would be perfect. She has the right attitude. No, I mean yes. she has a British accent but it's everything else network. is so perfect and i really would love to see that so I did not and her that... name is major yes and her hair is well perfect. her name is major eden sinclair she is an actor i know major. but they call her major for half the film you're just right major you're right and i did not put that together but you're in absolutely fact, they right they might have said the major at some point and i don't think it was intentional i really don't but yeah she's perfect she's the haircut i love that haircut by the way it's the the, pro the problem that i have <laughs> if i was a girl i'd have that haircut that's all i'm saying <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, says the bald man. Yeah. <laughs> um, the bald man. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, so w- one of the biggest problems that I have with her character is the eye. Um, especially when she tosses it. I think it. that's so fun. It, 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 why Why uh, when it tosses it? Because that, that to me, just it, it throws it all out the window. The second why? she throws it, I don't know. There's just something so unbelievable about her tossing her eye. But um, it, has, it could a have a little, eye. I'm a sure eye. it has a little gyro in it, because otherwise it would not It would just roll. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of one of those things. That it could scientifically work, and I think it's kind of cool, because, you know, it's like, you, I haven't seen that before. That was I, an actual original yeah. thought. And so what happens, yeah, early on you see that she gets, she loses an eye, and so now she's in, you know, doing espionage kind of stuff with this false eye, and she can take it out and set it on a ledge or whatever and monitor or record with her watch. I like I like that in one of the first scenes that she does that where she uses the eye to look around, it's sitting literally right there. So she could have just kind of bent down and looked, but no, she's going to yeah, have her but, eye do but that. But they're just establishing it. But yes, that's the sort of thing that makes it a guilty pleasure. So, But it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, everybody hated it. It was just one of those, you know, like everybody got a bad reviews. I just think that there is enough that it gets evoked that it's worth watching. It's one of those yeah. fun things. And if if you do enjoy movies like Death Race and uh, you could see the worth in smoking aces or, you know, what what I want to read those at some point because I think they're worth it, um, you might like this and pull something from it. So, yeah. like I say, it's not one of those you must watch or, you know, you'll be sorry if you miss it. It's kind of a crappy movie, but it's a fun crappy movie. I like I like that you you really enjoy those kind of movies that could be considered B movies, but they're the, they're so high in production value that they're almost like actual movies. You know, just kind of teetering, <laughs> actual teetering on the. It's on really the, high production value. They yeah. really went for it, but it's just too on the nose. Yeah, yeah. I, I there is a lot of fun to be there. I mean, to to have there. I mean. I liked I liked that black character whose name I yeah. forgot. I thought he was I really liked. He did his really character. well. He was kind of the straight man, but he did very well. Yeah, I, I dug him. I dug him. Um, so there is a lot to like. Just uh, it, it, you have to you have to ignore some things yeah, that, that your I brain mean, says. What to me it kind of feels like what is it the pod or something like one of those movies where you have a band of guys and you know that one's gonna die like every scene kind yeah. of thing. Although this one definitely hurries through that and then spends the majority of the time with a couple survivors. You know, kind of thing. Sorry if that's a spoiler. Um, but it, it, so it just manages to stay just out of most of the stereotypical part, I think. And again, Saul, uh, Craig Conway, I friggin' love watching him as Saul. He's creepy and I don't want him to survive, but he, I, he sells it and yeah. I really enjoy watching that. I agree. I agree. The acting, the acting was pretty damn good. And his girlfriend, that was pretty awesome. I think I, want... I think she was kick-ass and I like what happened there. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to say that with her girlfriend, she's, she's on the cover actually. His girlfriend. His girlfriend, yeah, his girlfriend. She's on the cover, but she doesn't really have a huge role. That's true, and in fact, uh, this was a movie where I thought that the main character went into madness or spent so long that she became this character. Yeah, yeah. So because did I. she's on the cover, so I I can definitely see that. And but yeah, I don't know, yeah, man. See, there's there's see. just something I like about so it. So this these two people are different, and she's she's not the main character, right? But she is over yeah. here yeah. in that tiny well, little. She's window. on the back, all by herself. Yeah, kind of. she is with the sword, and that's pretty cool, but. I don't know. It just there's me, the there's some action sequence that I really. I, like I think too. what they did. I think that what they did with her is we like her makeup. Put her on the cover, yeah. and that's kind of what they did. But yeah, the action. The action was pretty cool. I like the action. I like. I like that whole chase scene at the end. That was cool. And to me, again, I think it's the closest representation of something like Borderlands that I've ever seen. It's not good enough. Don't get me wrong. You don't think this? You don't think Mad Max is closer to Borderlands? Ugh, than no, this? Really? I don't. I, I'm so bored with with Mad Max. I really am. I like Beyond Thunderdome better. Are they doing another Mad Max movie? They're doing the game. Oh, I, the game. I don't know if they're doing another movie. They might, but they're doing the video game, and I don't know if it's going to be good. We'll see. The first Mad Max movie, it's like everybody's like, "Oh, Mad Max, Mad Max." You watch it, it's boring as hell. It is. It is. But, Thunderdome is awesome. Yeah, Thunderdome is usually what people think of, and it definitely is good, but. It gives, I think these two sandwiched together give a good representation of Borderlands, but I think that Mad Max is a lot too boring to be Borderlands. Borderlands is crazy and fun and all yeah, over the place. Yeah, that's true. And that's what I, so again, um, it's it's probably too high a praise to say that this is the closest to Borderlands, but I can't think of another movie that's closer than this. Yeah, with that whole punk vibe. I just wish they had done better. And it's the same thing I'm going to say with Smoking Aces if we ever review that, is like, there's so much potential and it was so cool and it... I guess these are these are movies that get my brain going, yeah. and like and like want, I want to j- immediately jump in and start making a better story or like using the characters or you know whatever fan fiction you know kind of material. So cult classic area, but not good enough. Right. right. Not it, not bad enough <laughs> or not good enough. It, it's a good movie. It's it's okay. 
I, I, I think you should watch it because there is some Especially if it's on TV. Yes. Fuck it, you know why. Yes, why not? Not not the greatest, but just ignore what your brain shouts. I'll agree. I'll agree. You know, it's not the greatest, but I think it was a fun experience. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our great playlist. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a car game, art, print, shirts, stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will chat with you all day. We're both blogging as well. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing updates to the world I've created for 10 plus years. Uh, take a look if you like it, uh, share it, support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com where I have short stories and poetry, so if you're interested, check that out. Alright guys, see you later! I'm gonna have my next embarrassing movie that I review. I definitely have a lot of guilty pleasures, so I'm right there with <laughs> Next time, it's week two of DC's Villains Month. Hot. This is the last one. It's Friday the 13th. Ooh. Creepy. We should be doing Friday the 13th then. Oh well. I like I also like that uh 30 years in this kind of uh, uh um ruined Scotland, but they still find ways to dye their hair. I I like that. I was like, how <laughs> well, did he make know. that pink? That is so amazing. People aren't completely morons. Like, yeah. yeah. Well you can't really just make your hair pink. Well, well, yeah, but I'm sure they had hair dye in Scotland, you know, I don't know. 30 years of whatever, whatever. Just saying. Yeah, there are some... Did you really? I don't know, it's fun, man. I definitely have a lot of guilty pleasures, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah, but we don't want to talk about those. Ugh. No. The, 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 like, dude, like seriously, like Borderlands, the gimp suit and how he's like tied to the bike and stuff. That was funny. Yeah, that was funny. And just the... Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's just so much that makes me feel that way. And this came out before Borderlands, so... Right? right? 2000, no. the 2008. First... When was the first Borderlands? That's a good question. 2009. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so Borderlands came after this, and so it was kind of like, oh, dude, that's like that Doomsday movie or something. I don't know. I don't, I don't know why I like it as much as I do. Again, I think it's just the fodder. It gets me excited about what could have been. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like... When a movie's like so good and then has a really shitty ending, that just makes you angry. This one's just kind of consistently off the whole way. And it's just, yeah. Consistently off makes it good. If u Bull had made this, it would be the best u Bull movie ever made. That's not, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. that. That's kind of- Are you kidding me? u Bull sucks ass. You're right, you're right, absolutely. Um, but I, I definitely wouldn't think that he would be that good. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. That, that makes me happy. But yeah. you both uh, what I'm what I'm saying is that it's a really good bad film, and it's not like terribly long or something. It's not like AI where I was instantly pissed off, <laughs> wanting my money back. You know. <laughs> Dude, the second I saw that night, I was like, what is going on? Yeah, but to me, again, that's like video game, because they, you know, they're doing their own thing. It's like, I have, fuck I you have, guys. I have never played a game where it's like punk rock and then medieval knight. It just threw Look, me off. Borderlands does that. They have pirates and they have, you know, it's like, I don't know. But aesthetically, they kind of all look the same. Yeah. They, they, they tie together well. Yeah. This, uh, it, it worked. It worked. For what it was, it worked. <laughs> Whatever. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, whatever. I'm agreeing with you. I don't care. <laughs> you don't care that I'm agreeing with you? You just feel too guilty about it. I don't know. Yeah, why. well, yeah. I mean, there's a reason. It's just not that great. So don't send me hate mail. There's, there's movies that you just gotta love. I mean, people... You hate um, um, Lost Skeleton of Cadavra, and yes. I love that movie. I hate that movie. I'm not gonna be like, oh, man, it's too wide. Come on. Because the movie's awesome. Yeah, but that movie, like, wastes your life. <laughs> like, really? I don't know, man. That's what you find funny about it, actually. Some of it. I think you're right.